Who's heard of the new EEOC guidelines that came out in April? So the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission basically said in April that companies that have these broad policies that exclude people with criminal backgrounds, you're dead wrong. Because statistics show that more people of color, right, have offenses in their background, and these policies are going to have a disparate impact against them. So that's a borderline Title VII violation, which includes things like race, sexual, uh, uh, religious discrimination, right? So broad exclusions have a disparate impact based on race and national origin. They also said we are encouraging companies to do individualized assessments, meaning if your customer goes to an employer, they run a background check, and they say this came up, they are encouraging that employer to come back to your customer and say this came up, tell us more details, and to take into consideration a few things. One being the job-related and business necessity standard for why, that how that offense may preclude that person from working in that position. Another thing being the amount of time that has passed and the type of offense that it was. So now, and then they went on to recommend, you heard of ban the box. EOC is recommending removing the questions about convictions from job applications. Now here's what you need to know. The agency shall not perform a background check until the agency determines that an applicant is a finalist or makes a conditional offer of employment to the applicant. Guess who that is? You know? What agency can't do background checks until they determine that the applicant is a finalist or makes a conditional offer of employment to the to the, anyone know? State it. It's the employer. No. Right? Mm -hmm. It's the employer, a specific employer though that we're talking about. So the whole state, the whole state, right. government agency. State. State of Colorado has this in place. So refer your clients to state jobs. <laughs> you can apply for them. The state has a, and I'm using this term loosely because they don't call it this, but a similar ban the box standard that other municipalities have begun putting in place, like San Francisco, Philadelphia, Detroit, I think St. Louis. So a lot of people don't know that, but that's their standard. They don't go into that question until you're offered or given a conditional offer of employment or bargaining for them. Wouldn't that be great if all employers did that? Right? So it's nice to know that's happening at that level because that'll set the tone. Do employers use people's applications and their social security number to run background checks? So, yes, but they have to have that disclaimer at the bottom that the person signs off their permission. So they can't run one, back to that myth buster question, they can't run one without the person's signature signing off. And once again, that's one of the, and I can share copies of that, that's back to that consumer credit reporting, FCRTA, ACT stuff. We've been recommending that they not include their entire social security number Interesting. until okay. they're offered the position. Nice. How's that working? Are you getting feedback on that? I haven't gotten any feedback. I haven't gotten any feedback So the, I would be interested to hear what the employer's feedback is on that. Because the clients, if they're not getting calls, then the check-in would be with the employer to say, why don't you call them? Say, well, they can do this all their social. I like that, though. Um, because then if they do reach out and say, hey, give us more info, it must be because you're interested in my skills. Well, not only that, that way they're not running your credit. Sure. Right. Without your knowledge. Right. Well, the key there is, good point, is that signature. The client signs over. And the great thing about the state of Colorado is they should get a notice in the mail. And I've had clients, believe it or not, who haven't been as forthcoming as we've encouraged them to be in some of their job pursuits, gotten a notice that said, hey, this is what you told us, this is what we found, help us understand why we should hire you. 
you know, and that's where a letter of explanation came into play. So over over in well, um, we've been getting a lot of employ our a lot of our clients who have been getting the employment. They got to that point, they're offered the job, and then the background. And right. So they're very excited, and then they don't get the job. Yeah. And this is happening with call centers all over northern Colorado. So so they're following the the rule that they're not supposed to discriminate, but then. It comes to that point. Yeah, and that may be that may that's in Weld County. Yeah. That may be an EEOC matter. There's but so there's a couple of initial questions I have about that. One would be um, from a job development standpoint, if that's happening with a particular employer, is there an opportunity to go have a conversation with that employer? Okay. And then two would be what could be done differently with the client to help inform the employer at an earlier stage and empower the client, or shall I say empower the employer to make a different decision before getting their hopes up with a tentative offer. So some of that may be answered, it, it may, there may not be anything, especially like I say, if it's an EEOC issue that it may need to be addressed. The EEOC in response to this guidelines that came out, they are doing trainings and putting together things to better inform employers about how to respond to this. You also got to keep in mind too, on Connecting Colorado, we had that tab that said, will you consider an ex-offender for hire? I don't know if you've noticed, but since June, it's gone. So that's one of the good things that it used to work for our clients and now it's gone because the ambiguity around those guidelines. 